Uh, Orthworm. Orthworm. <laughs> I okay. stupid Pokemon, but I, I I do love him just because of how stupid it. Oh, well, first I'll do the Dex, and then I'll do my opinion. Uh, yeah. Scarlet says that when attacked, this Pokemon will wield the tendrils on his body like fists and pelt the opponent with a storm of punches. And Violet says this Pokemon lives in arid deserts and maintains his metal body by consuming iron from the soil. Yum, yum, yum. I... Okay, first of all, this is just a complaint with all of the uh, Pokemon that they're Titans of. None of them have evolutions. They're all single stage. And yeah. that's kind of disappointing to me. I'm also, though, not really a fan of worms. <laughs> all, the, all the worm lovers in the chat just left. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. Worms, it just looks eo to me. And uh, this one, yeah. we, it doesn't look slimy. This one actually looks like robotic or something, which is weird. Yeah. Uh... I mean, I don't know how controversial it is, but I put it in upper D tier. That's fair. I no, um, no, you know what? I'll put it lower C because we don't didn't have a worm, and we, it took us like twenty five years to get a worm. So fair, lower C. <laughs> I I am putting it in high D tier because even though I like him, it doesn't. It's just a, it doesn't look like a Pokemon to me. It just looks. It, it's too far gone in the Why is in it eight feet. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like it's huge. It's not like everything that makes it a worm is not present, and everything that makes it steel just doesn't seem like it needed it. You know, it's nearly like it has like hundred pounds. It has tendrils that it uses as fists. Like it has those blue strength. Like why are they blue? Uh, because worms have they... blue blood, maybe. <laughs> Maybe they do. I mean, egg on my face, I guess. You, I, you already answered the question. I said maybe. I don't know if they do. Oh, uh, fair enough. It's just a theory. No, don't say it. A worm You're theory. Get the money. A worm theory. You said Thanks it. Thanks for squirming. Uh, <laughs> Thanks for squirming. Squirming. Okay. Squirming. Where, uh, where is it? Tandem mouse. So, story time. Immediately, no time. immediately after getting to big city, going to school, getting through all that intro stuff, and then being yeah. told to set out into the world and getting your mount, first thing my weird shad brain decided to do was jump off the side of the city into the water, not knowing that I can't swim. But it also didn't matter because jumping off the side of the city like unloaded me and reloaded me on the path to the uh, Pokemon League, where... Mm. I just was like, heck, I'm already here. So I went and did the Pokemon League exam. And they let me do the entire exam. And then failed me and told me, yeah, we do that as a formality, but you can't do it with zero badges. And really? I, like, I, I never, I didn't try. I yeah, always no, went with all. They, they do the interview. They do the interview anyways, even though you can't pass it. And then afterwards tell you that, sorry, we wasted your time. We actually can't accept it. I, I thought the guy at the front would just, like, stop you from going in. No, he asked how many badges I had. I had said zero, and he was like, okay, come in for your interview. <laughs> I was like, wow, you guys are assholes. Yeah, that's rough. That's, but that, point... that interview, like, scared me. Oh, yeah, because yeah. you can fail it. But I didn't know that. You can. If you, like, answer a question that's logically incorrect or inconsistent with what you said previously, or if you say that you're wannabe champion to have fun or to beat Nimona, those also are failures. Uh, really? But anyways, the point of my story is on the way there is where I found Tandemouse. Mm -hmm, right at the start mm -hmm. of the game. And I was like, it's just two mice. I kind of like it though. Mice. It's literally just two mice. It's just two mice, and then uh, and then it evolves. So we'll get to that. It's deck entry. It said uh, exhibiting teamwork. They use their incisors to cut pieces out of any material that might be useful for a nest to make off of them, which is just what two mice do. It's just what two mice would do. <laughs> Violet <laughs> says the pair sticks together no matter what. They split any food they find exactly in half and then eat it together, which it's is so not cute. just what two mice do. <laughs> 
I mean, there's been studies that show that mice will help other mice even if it means that they get less of a reward. Will they split exactly in half, though? Oh, I don't know. Can, no, can I don't they think count so. like that? Like, no, I don't think so, no. Either way, I mean, they're fine. They're very simple looking. They don't even look like Pokemon to me. Yeah, like, there's like a weird tone to their bodies that I'm supposed to, I assume are like supposed to be like clothes, but I can't tell. No, they, like, I haven't seen it. To me, they look like like little kids play toys. Yeah. But I, Absolutely. I don't dislike them, and mm, I still put them in C tier, but upper C tier. In fact, top of C tier. Yeah. Yep. Um, I have a story time, but I have a story time about its evolution. So, um, I agree with everything you said. Middle of the road, uh, high C, because I do like them more than small if and all. I can't believe it took me this long to get the pun of their evolution. Of the mouse? <laughs> yeah, the evolution name, the name pun. Yeah, mouse hold. Mouse hold. Yeah. How'd that take you so long? <laughs> How'd that take you so long? <laughs> Do you know the, the, the pun of the first one? Because they're in tandem? Yeah. They're together? Yeah, I knew that one. Oh, yeah. And then it's a mouse hold, yeah. I don't know. I didn't think about the name that much, I guess. <laughs> uh, That's fair. That's I fair. actually really like that name. <laughs> That's so dumb. Oh, no. It's going to be higher now because <laughs> you just got the pun. Uh, probably. I mean, honestly, the, the score might surprise you. <laughs> Ooh, that should be that should be the tagline to the YouTube video. Mousehold <laughs> score might surprise you. Yeah, you gotta do it. Pokemon uh, tier list. Mousehold score may surprise you, and they, then you just this, blur. This is gonna be multiple videos. But... Uh, did you want to do your story first, or do you want me to talk about? Yeah, I'll do my story time first. Okay, so I never, I really didn't encounter Tandem Mouse at all. My first playthrough. Uh, like, I saw that they spawned, like you said, in uh, Northwest Mesagosa as you're, like, going into the league. I did not encounter any until post-game. Caught one. And by the time I did post-game, I was like, okay, spoilers are off because I already beat the game, you know? Yeah. Uh, listen to Ed Sheeran's cover, whatever, you know? Like, I did all of it. So I looked it up how it evolves. It's like, oh, yeah, level blah, blah, blah. I don't even remember anymore. 25. So I had a pop of candies from Terra Battles. So I'm like, okay, you know, pump steroids into the Pokemon, and then it evolved. It doesn't evolve. And I'm like, okay, what's going on? So I catch another one, and I level it up. It doesn't evolve. I'm like, what the hell is going on? And so, so I go back, and suddenly it's evolved. And I'm like, wait, what? I, it, I didn't press B. Like, I didn't skip the cutscene. And then I looked it up, and it doesn't have an evolution cutscene. Uh, it does if it if you sent it out in the battle. If it yeah, it didn't from the experience. If you level up from like this shared experience, though, from not and it wasn't sent out, then it won't get a screen. Yeah, I was like, what? How did it evolve? Like, I didn't see it evolve. What's going on? It threw me off. So yeah. I have two mouse holds both of them a family of four which is unfortunate yeah family of three is hard to get yeah it's the same it's the done sparse all over again i don't know why having one child is so hard for that huh? well they, they breed like mice yeah yeah no i i well first of all before i say my opinions the dex entry the family of four says the two little ones just appeared one day the group mm -hmm. might be a family of related Pokemon, but nobody knows for sure. And Violet says, mm -hmm. the larger pair protects the little ones during battles. When facing strong opponents, the whole group will join the fight. In the family three, Scarlet says, they build a huge nest with many rooms that are used for different purposes, such as eating and sleeping. And Violet says, the little one just appeared one day. They all live together like a family, but the relationship between the three is still unclear. And, uh... The, the relationship between the three is 
maybe less unclear because I assume you can still breed this as Ditto. So <laughs> you're just breeding the whole family. Uh, you there? Hello? Inheritance? Uh, I think he's muted for a moment. Uh... Yeah, he's, he's muted for a moment. Hopefully he'll be back soon. I'm back. Okay. I'll, I'll cry his head into bed. Okay. Well, as I said, I think you can still breed them. Gross. With di with Ditto, only with Ditto, because they're uh, genders mm, of general. Them. But you should, yeah, you can still breed them, because they're field and fairy egg group. So you could breed the whole family with a Ditto, and that's kind of weird. But, that is kind of weird. But, uh, I mean, a family that... Very Caligula. <laughs> Is it is Caligula the 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 massive orgy and stuff? Oh God! Well, yeah, uh, I either way, I kind of love that they don't. I I I'm hoping that it's a mistake that they have an evolution screen when leveled up if they're in the battle. I'm hoping the intention is they don't ever aren't supposed to have an evolution screen because yeah. I love the concept that it's not actually an evolution; it's just them reproducing. And yeah. you just don't see it the same way nobody knows where Pokemon eggs come from. Mm -hmm. If these are maybe canonically the first Pokemon that don't lay eggs, that have just live birth. Like, well, yeah, because if you, like, that's really weird if you were to breed them. Like, the it, it's a breeding pair that hatch from the egg. Yeah, I don't, this is a disconnect where breeding the hen in game. Yeah. That, that, yeah. Because... Well, they're portals. We already established their portals, right? Hoopa. Sure. Hoopa does it. Either way, just the fact that the the evolution is literally just they reproduced, that is bonus points for me. Plus, it's mouse hold. It was going to be a B, but now it's A because of the pun. <laughs> Fair. Uh, um... The family of four. I mean, I actually, even though a family of three is rare, four is a bigger number, so that's higher. I agree. Same. Mine is low B, but it's higher than ten. The mouth, and the family of four is higher, even though the family of is rare. Uh, yeah, they're they're kind of lowish A. So, uh, oh yeah. Now we have uh, Satoddle. Satoddle. So its evolution was shown off early on. Fairly, kind of early. On middle on. yeah uh but yeah Satoddle is a big old whale that walks on land and is a toddler it's a toddler <laughs> uh its deck says the species left the ocean and began living on land a very long time ago it seems to be closely related to whalmer who i don't think is in the game it's not and violets is it lives in frigid regions and pods of five or so individuals it loves the minerals found in snow and ice uh, it's it's fine, I guess. I don't I don't know. I I have a C tier. Yeah, very uh, very middle of the road. I would say C tier as well. Uh, right above small. Uh, right there, below the frog, above the three eels. Uh, and then. It evolves with an ice stone into a titan, uh, who's a big spiky walking wow. Dex entry is this Pokemon wanders around snowy icy areas and protects its body with powerful muscles and a thick layer of fat under its skin. And Violet says ice energy builds up in the horn of its upper jaw, causing the horn to reach cryogenic temperatures that freeze its surroundings. I do like it a little more than Satato, like the spikes and stuff. Uh, I think it's still probably a C tier for me, though. I like it less than Satato, and it's bottom C for me. Fair. No thoughts. I like you, Pokemon. <laughs> it's fine. I like big Pokemon. It's 14 feet. Yeah. It's, almost, it's 
over 1500 pounds like yeah but like is that representative when you take it out of a pokeball that's the question uh probably not because 14 feet would be freaking massive yeah that would be almost probably almost triple the size of your character i don't or in height and i don't think they are <sighs> uh oh we're the, the pseudo legendary yeah i forget their name i know uh the I'll, last one is archibax or something i'll be honest i only saw the final i first saw the final stage of it during the champion fight and i never saw a thing, single one in its line until post game when i actively searched for it yeah i had one i i i found one um in one of the shiny because there's like a static terra one oh shiny in the mountain no it's like uh the terra the the, uh, the yeah. single terra types that like you can see the light from, yeah. the, from far away like i used to seek those out when i played in violet so like i found one pretty early on yeah, um no, but and i had to reach the mountains i was not exploring a lot yeah no, I had a blast. I was exploring right, right until I mean, I'm still exploring, and I'm playing it twice. And it's my second time playing it. So, uh, I like the game. Frigibax absorbs heat through its dorsal fin and converts the heat into ice energy. That's not a thing. The higher the temperature, the more energy Frigibax stores. And Violet says this Pokemon lives in forests and craggy areas. Using the power of its dorsal fin, it cools the inside of its nest like a refrigerator. I mean, if Frigibax exists in the Pokemon universe, then they've defied the laws of thermodynamics. Like, Probably. Like, no, like, truly, that's what it is. They could convert heat into ice. Like, thermodynamics is that... No, it's the opposite. Sorry. Thermodynamics is that everything is going to cool off eventually. So they're helping thermodynamics freeze the entire universe. Eh. Uh, otherwise... Honestly, based on design, I probably would have given it a C, but this is the pseudo-legendary, and I think this is like one of the least, probably the least, interesting first stage of a pseudo-legendary, in my yeah. opinion. So I put I'm going to be on it. I'm going to put it in F. Uh, I don't like the first stage at all. Like, I don't think it's cute. I don't think it's indicative of what it's going to turn into. Like, I mean, it's higher than Varum or the name of that Pokemon is, but it's right underneath Hero Form, uh, Palafin. But the other two I like more. Yeah, you know, we'll get to yeah. it. Yeah. Arctabax. Uh, Scarlet's Arctabax freezes the air around it, protecting its face from an ice mask and turning its dorsal fin into a blade of ice. And that says it attacks the blade of its frozen dorsal fin by doing a front flip in the air. Arctivax is strong back and legs allowed to pull off this technique. Uh, I think it's cute enough. It's still kind of like a C tier because in terms of super legendaries, I still think it's one of the less interesting ones here. Yeah. And it's really hard to follow the Dreepy line. The Dreepy line is so good. Dreepy line is very good. And I... It took a lot out of me to not have uh, a dreepy line Pokemon in my team, but I already had a ghost type, so and I don't like doubling up, so it was unfortunate. But yeah, uh, Archibax, uh, high D tier. High D, okay. Better than the Frigibax or whatever. Yeah, I I think it's it's fine. That's about it. Uh, then Bax Caliber, the one that I saw first because of the champion. Uh, this Pokemon blasts cryogenic air out from its mouth. The air can instantly freeze even liquid hot lava. It launched itself into battle by flipping upside down and spewing frigid air from its mouth. It finished its opponents <laughs> off with its dorsal blade. But that's so funny. It's so funny to think of the Pokemon coming out of the Pokemon and just like literally like wapa. Uh, just like and then freezing you like upside down i mean it's cool but like all yeah. pseudo legendaries are kind of cool yeah and glaive rush is an interesting move like i don't think there's been a move like that it's like uh, a very risk reward what is, I, I can look at what it's it like is. 120 power ice no i think it's dragon 
Either way, the, 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 the unique thing is that the next turn you'll take double damage. Oh, yeah. So, like, I did see it when I evolved it. Yeah. Which is interesting, right? Because I don't think there's moves like like it's it's the same like Tinkaton with this gigantic you know hammer thing that it's like unique ways that moves play out as opposed to like abilities. I mean, it has an interesting ability too. Yeah, I never it never procked for me, and even though I had it in my team during the end game, I never got hit with a fire type move. But so I don't know if it. Negates fire type. I don't know if you're still. Uh, it does not negate it, but so. it takes neutral damage to fire because it's dragon typing. So it's not weak mm. to fire. So, Fair enough. But it still can't be burned either, which is nice. It's actually really nice because being burned really sucks for a physical attacker. Damn. But, uh, I mean, overall, I think it's cool, but it's just feels like just trying to make a pseudo legendary for the sake of making a pseudo legendary yeah and it's and as far as kaiju is concerned it's not even a particularly good kaiju is it based on a specific one or i mean it just looks like a godzilla yeah, but i'm saying cool. like uh like could have been a cooler godzilla you know what i mean <laughs> yeah like all things considered if I'd want to give this a B, but because it's, it just feels like just another pseudo legendary, nothing particularly noteworthy. I think I'd put it just high, high C. Yeah, that's what I did. I did F for the first stage, D for the second, and C for the third. So it, it got progressively cooler. Uh, if I if I want to be honest, I would probably in real life have it in its second stage and not get it past that. Um, but that's just me. Uh, is the second stage one that turns up the fifth? No, oh, this one flips upside down. It, this massive yeah. thing. The six, six foot eleven, 460 pound creature flips upside down and sprays you with air. cold air. Yeah. I mean, I've, I feel like I would enjoy it because I, I like the cold. So, like, I mean, I'll, it's like, probably like sub zero temperatures. So, well, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. The second stage is going to be isn't going to be as bad and I could just have it like far away from me as it's cooling everything off around, you know. Fair. I guess it's cheaper than air conditioning. Exactly. You just got to uh, feed it. Now, uh Cyclizer. The, the legendary Pokémon kind of. Uh, yeah. I wish I wish it was like Cosmog that you could evolve them into the legendaries. It's kind of sad that they, it doesn't work that way, but it makes sense uh, that it doesn't. Yeah. Garlos is apparently cycles are has been allowing people to ride on its back since ancient times. The depiction of this had been found in 10,000-year-old murals, and Violet says it can sprint at over 70 miles per hour carrying a human. The rider's body heat warms cycles are back and lifts the Pokemon spirit. And I think it's a low C, to be honest. It, I, yeah, um, I'd maybe put it a low B if you could ride it. Well, yeah, that 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 was like what was upsetting to me about it. Like, like I said, like it would have been nice if, which again, it wouldn't make sense for the story, but like if you started off with a cyclizer and then through the narrative it evolved into I mean, ride on or even if you just you had know. the option to, if you have one in your party, you can ride it. Oh, you can ride it instead. Yeah, like it just. It would be a little, little bit of something unique about it that would make it interesting. But yeah. As it stands, it also would have been. It's just the Pokemon that I see a bunch of at the edges of towns. Yeah, like it also would have been cool if, like, if like I said, where like it would evolve through the story, but you can actually use it during the game. So it was like, just a Pokemon that you could literally fight with and stuff, and then you would grow to have a connection with us with it as it evolved into the starter you know fair because like it just felt weird having like this super legendary like following you around like a puppy the entire game you know eh, I, I don't was, know i was fine with it but also i just like the convenience of quicker way to travel so yeah well and that's what i'm saying like even like the Herba mystica could like slowly awaken more powers and it'll eventually morph into you know what i mean yeah it could have been a way yeah it would have uh, really changed the story i feel so 
Yeah, um, I would say um, mid C, literally uh, right after the Tauruses, because I like the design and I like the lore implication. Um, but I wish I had a reason to have it in my team because I don't, as it stands. Yeah, like I said, I put it kind of, uh, I put it more lower C. It's fine for lore, but just I yeah. have no reason to ever use it. Exactly. And the only other normal dragon Pokemon we have, Drampa, is infinitely more interesting. I love Drampa. So, uh, Pommy. Pommy. Uh, first, I'll try to just do the decks. Uh, his underdeveloped electric sacks in his cheeks. These sacks can produce electricity only if Pommy rubs them furiously with the pads on his forepaws. <laughs> and Violet says the pads of his paws are electricity discharging organs. Pommy fires electricity from his forepaws while standing on stud of ants' hind legs. Do, does it come to electricity from pat forepaws? Or paws or its cheeks? I think it's paws. I think what it does is like it does this. And pads are the, like electric. It says the sacks on its cheek produce electricity. But yeah, and then it's like, and then he like rubs them, and then his paws have the electricity on the paws. Okay. But they come from the cheek. Okay. Like, all, all things considered, in my uh, opinion, this is the best uh, Pikachu, Pika clone we've ever gotten. I agree. But mainly due to its evolutions, it itself is kind of generic looking. Yes. Uh, when I originally saw it, I was not excited about it at all. Like, I'm uh, putting but... it in on its own in C just below the Tauruses. I would do the same. C just below the Tauruses. Uh, but then Pomo, where it evolves via level into the first ever electric fighting Pokemon. Already one thing interesting about it. Second, it's the first Pika clone to evolve. And uh, third is that it's not even done. <laughs> and yeah. uh, the deck says when its group is attacked, Pomo is the first to leap into battle, defeating enemies with a fighting technique that utilizes electric shocks. And Violet says Pomo uses a unique fighting technique in which he uses four paws to strike foes and zap them with electricity from its paw pads simultaneously. And already that's probably bumped up to B. Um... I'm going to be uh, very honest and actually rate it lower, uh, like literally bottom C, and that's merely because of its evolution style and the fact that because of how it evolved, I literally... It only evolves via level. That's the next stage you're thinking about. That's what I'm saying. I'm talking about how this one evolves into the next stage. Like, it, I, I had zero incentive to even use it. Like I know, I literally did not see combat in this form. It went straight from evolving, and then the, literally the next oh. level it evolved into its final stage. Okay, so I, like I have I zero emotional connection to this Pokemon. Okay. Um, which we didn't actually speak about that because uh, Relor, this oh, Pokemon, yeah. and then more Pokemon evolve in a new way. Yeah, by and, walking uh, steps with the Let's Go feature, Let's get it to yeah. walk out of its Pokeball. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, the the one that evolves after walking a thousand steps is the Pomat. Yeah, which is that's what I like. uh, Dex says this Pokemon normally is slow to react, but once after battle, it will strike with lightning fast movements. And Pomat's full fluffy fur acts as a battery. Uh, it can store the amount of electricity as an elect same amount of electricity as an electric. Electric guitar. Electric car. <laughs> I didn't realize electric guitars had batteries in them. <laughs> Battery powered electric guitar. <laughs> so, the best that, like, it's already great that this is electric fighting, which is both first of its type and just a good offensive type. Electric and fighting mm -hmm. are both great offensive types. Mm -hmm. But additionally, this thing has, I believe, two signature moves. Uh, yeah. I forgot what the... Revival Blessing. I know Revival Blessing. What was the other one? 
Uh, it's like overcharge. Uh, it's a wild charge. That's not new. No. Uh, double shock. Double shock. Yeah. Which is very a... interesting. Yeah, I'll I'll go with that one first because that while they're both interesting, this one is the least like game changing out of the two. But it's yeah. still this is a base one twenty electric move, which very few moves go above a hundred without some big flaw. And the big flaw here is you lose your electric typing and become yeah. pure fighting now. So then you don't have to stab it anymore. Sure. But uh it's it's your your big big last move when you need a good strong electric move and then you yeah. and uh it reverts back to electric fighting if you switch it out so mm -hmm. so it's not that bad yeah like once again base 120 electric if if you're hitting something super effective with this you're probably one shotting it so and then revival blessing though revival blessing was wild a one pp move which i don't think there's a single other move that only has one pp but yeah. it revives a fainted pokemon in your party which is unprecedented yeah it can gets, you use pp on it can you use what i never can you use pp up on revival blessing do you no, know it has max one you cannot raise its pp its pp is one uh even on Volopedia it says it's one and then max is one mm. It'd be really broken if you could PP up that. Well, yeah, right? But it's still pretty broken because when all things... Like, it's not a bad Pokemon already, so it can be a good offensive. But then when all things said and done, if you really need, like, your biggest power out back, you just revive it. Yeah, especially in competitive where you can use items. Yeah, I'm, I'm very curious how long-term this will be in competitive. Yeah. Even though I don't really do competitive, I'm just curious how it plays play out for sure yeah like that's the that's the most viable like because i used it all the time like i use my revival blessing instead of like buying revives even though by the end of the game you have so many of them but um i just i just think it's like a uh, neat because it's like it's a move we've never seen before and like the the lower implications of a move like that are crazy to me personally uh otherwise i personally replace this a tier below mouse hold. I put it A tier above everything else. It's like right below S. Because like I said, I like I had it I think it evolves at 18 to its second form. And then I by level 19 I had a third stage Pokemon with third stage Pokemon stats literally just leaving the school. Like I had a third stage Pokemon before I even had a single batch. So it was, so it carried me through a lot of the game and it had, um, the first time around it had Vaulted Sword, which made it again, like any move that, any ability that absorbs a type is busted in my opinion, personally. Yeah. Um, cause it's other move is like Natural Cure, which is like, it's good, but like for me it's situational cause like I usually don't switch Pokemon. I'll just fight until the Pokemon faints, so. I mean, like, its signature ability, of course, was really good. What What's uh, the signature ability? Iron Fist. It boosts the power of all punching moves. Well, yeah, but like, is that hidden or is or, it like not available? Signature, sorry, hidden, not signature. Yeah, hidden. yeah. If I, if if I had the hidden ability, yeah, it'd be great. Yeah. But I never got one with its hidden ability. Yeah, that's fair. I just wanted to point that out because it's interesting. Yeah, I, yeah either it's way, very good. It's uh. I do want to note that I did have it in my through the Elite Four and I'm in the game and mine I named it back when it was a Pommy and it just was to me just another Pika clone. I didn't know it get really good and that I'd want to keep it. And so mine's name was Nuevechu, like Nueve Nine, because it's Gen Nine. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah, I also I like how drastic of a size difference it is between the two forms because pomo is like teeny tiny it's like you could fit it into palm of your hands and then pomma 
is like almost as big as your player character. So uh, like when I Pommy is one foot two, Pama is two foot eleven, so it's a little more than twice the height. Like in the game, it just like I don't think the sizes are like match because like it was like substantially big. Like yeah, it's like definitely not. Yeah, but yeah, that's my opinion. Well, this thing is heavy, ninety pounds, and it's only two foot eleven. That's what I'm saying. I don't think that's right. I think that like there's something wrong with that, or like your character is just minuscule. Yes. Well, unfortunately, now it's the regional bird. Watro, right? Watro. Uh, Dex, like, when, when its wings catch the wind, the bones within produce electricity. This Pokemon dives into the ocean, catching prey by electrocuting them. And Violet says, these Pokemon make their nests in coastal cliffs. The nests have a strange, crackling texture, and they're a proper deli popular delicacy. That is true. Um, there is a species of bird that people make soup with their nests. Because, like, they make it with, like, a specific kind of plant and like their saliva the bird's saliva like gelatinizes the plant it's like a it's like a it's like a true thing like it's a dish i don't know what it's called but i've i've heard of it and it's just the nest it's not the bird it's the nest i i believe you uh I'm looking it up while you're talking i actually found it in Baldopedia's oh, okay here. edible bird's nest oh there's there's not just one there's multiple Edible birds' nests, but there's a Chinese one that it looks like. like there's no uh, swiftlets, but it's solidified saliva. Okay. Either way, uh, it's a regional bird. I guess it's electric, and that's kind of yeah. interesting. I guess. Just prized in Chinese culture. Another hint that the next region might be in China. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Uh, otherwise, Watrol, like, I feel like it should be interesting, but I'm kind of not. Yeah, it's I like wanted to like it, but by the time that I saw it, I was numb to new Pokemon. I would say bottom C. Uh, trying to decide where I put this in the C. I like it more the cycles are, I guess. So, but pretty low on C. I, I just... It's hard to really impress me with a regional bird, I feel, though, I mean, Gen 7 and 8, I love both of those regional birds. Two Cannon, I had through the entire game. Two Cannon is ace. Two Cannon's great, and Corviknight's yeah. fine. Corviknight's cool. I had a Corviknight in my Galar playthrough. But, like, then Watril has to evolve into Kilowatril. I hate that name. Kilowattro. Yeah, it's, I still don't even own a Kilowattro. That I've, as I said, I'm building a live deck, so I haven't gotten to that. I have enough. Yeah, Kilowattro inflates his throat slack to amplify his electricity by riding the wind. This Pokemon can fly over 430 miles in a day, and it uses its throat slack to store electricity generated by its wings. There's hardly any oil in its feathers, so it is a poor swimmer. <laughs> Cool, that's great when you're flying 400 miles over the ocean. Yeah, you know how it is. <laughs> but, uh... I might even rate it lower, because... I don't know. I don't have strong enough feelings to even know if I want to place it higher or lower. I'll place it directly yeah. lower. I don't... I place it substantially lower. It's like bottom D, like below our Beliva. I like Watro way more than I like Kilowattro. i fairly indifferent. The only thing interesting to me is their electric flying, which otherwise is only Zapdos and Emolga. Oh, and yeah. the, the one of the forms of the Horikoro. Rotom? Horikoro. Yeah, the, yeah, pop, the, the cheerleader style. one. Yeah. Okay. Bird Badir. <sighs> Why doesn't this game have good birds? Yeah, it's upsetting. I really wanted this to, be, I really wanted it to be like, like a nurturing, like a stork, like not well, like this, like agent of chaos. I mean, for one, it's it's stuck in the tight end single stage zone. Oh yeah, we haven't even gotten to cloth yet. And two, 
Like, I hate that weird, like, bib that's made out of feathers. Feathers, the, yeah. The deck says it gathers things up in an apron made from shed feathers added to the Pokemon's chest feathers, then drops those things in high places for fun. Bombardier uses the apron on its chest to bundle up food, which it carries back to its nest. It enjoys dropping things that make loud noises. And it's just... I... D. I, I really hate how it looks. Yeah. This is I D. put it in D above Fairy Giraffe. Below Fairy Giraffe, sorry. In between Fairy Giraffe and Oink Colognes. That said, though, Squawka Billies! I wish they evolved. I wish they evolved, for sure. Uh, at, at that point, I... Like, I, I thought that was... I got a little excited when I saw it because I thought it that was the regional bird, as in it would yeah. evolve. But instead, it's a regional gimmick Pokemon. The yeah, the gimmick is that there's four different forms. Yeah, yeah the gimmick is there's four colors. Wow. The, the, it's normal flying. It feels like a slightly more interesting Chatot to me. Yeah. Like, it looks nice enough. That's like about it. It's decks. Yeah. Oh god. Oh god, there's so many dex entries. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you want to read all of them. I would just pick uh, one. I'm trying to see if there's anything very interesting that they uh, they live in cities. They yeah. live in flocks. Turf wars. The white uh, one's the rarest, followed by blue, followed by yellow with green. It's common. I've caught all four, so <laughs> I've read yeah, their entries. They're not even super interesting deck entries. They're not. They uh, get into Tower 4. That said, Some of them are more popular than others. That said, I do like them more than Watch Roll. They at least look kind of interesting. Yeah. I'd still put them C tier. I would put them C tier above Watch Roll, but I would specifically put them in green, then white, then blue. And then yellow. I'm actually putting them in the same order. Oh, that's fun. I like the green one specifically because it's like a almost like a little Easter egg. Like you see two of them fly to the roof of your house. And if you go back after you get the Pokeballs, they're there. And you can catch them really early in the game. Oh, uh, interesting. Yeah, they're still there. So that's fun. Like I was like... Oh, that's neat. Like, they're not great Pokemon, but, like, they're still there. You know, they're level 2 and level 1. Or... So they're they're meant to be caught at this time of the game. But I only noticed that in my second play, when yeah. I decided to go back and check. But that's it. That's why I like green, because they're green. I, I just that's like my green because it looks like a parrot, I guess, and that looks kind of nice. Yeah. Uh... Flamigo... Now... Probably my biggest disappointment in the game. I think it upsets me specifically because of its Scarlet Pokedex entry. Uh, it upsets me because it doesn't evolve. Yeah, it also it upsets me also because of its mouth. Like its beak oh. opens in the middle. Like that's not yeah. how beaks work. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the Scarlet entry is this Pokemon apparently ties the base of its neck into a knot so that the energy yeah. stored in its belly does not escape from its beak. It ties its, its neck in a knot? It's because it's inflatable. If you look at it, it looks like an inflatable flamingo. Ugh. It's upsetting. And Viola is, thanks to a behavior of theirs known as synchronizing, an entire flock of these Pokemon <laughs> can attack simultaneously in perfect harmony. Why We've they, never heard of that term before in this game. I think that's some new thing, synchronizing. Right? It's not like <laughs> Ralts' ability is synchronized. Like, we've never heard of that term before. Uh, that being I, um, said, Flamingo is all is at least very strong in the early game. Yeah, it's actually apparently like a mainstay in the speed running because like it can pretty like it can pretty much if it has Scrappy can do the entire game by itself. If yeah, you... it has base one fifteen attack and base ninety speed, which isn't like game no. breaking, but that's pretty good throughout the game. Yeah, and at the beginning, that's really good. Uh, I'm just upset, like I said, because its mouth opens, its beak opens in the middle, and it ties its neck into a knot. Uh, I don't know. It's That's weird. It's still a lower end B for me. 
it's uh i i appreciate it and that i appreciate having a flamingo pokemon and fu fly, I agree. Fly, flying fighting is not a common combo it's gonna go below palmy no above palmy below the tauruses fair okay cloth cloth upsetting uh cloth I should mean... have been kingler's evolution I don't know if but like you said, I I, I, I agree with it being its own line. I just think it should have had an evolution or something. Yeah. Or be the evolution. Cloth was pretty perfect looking the way he is. Yeah, they, they uh, could have been like a smaller crab Pokemon that evolved into it. Yeah, there's no reason the Titans had to be single stage. It um, really wasn't. The deck says Cloth hangs upside down from cliffs waiting for prey, but Cloth can't remain in this position for long because its blood rushes to its head. Yeah. And Violet says this Pokemon lives on sheer cliffs. It sidesteps opponent's attacks, then lunges for their weak spots with its claws. I still really like the Pokemon. It's a shame that it's single stage, but I really like almost everything else about it. And yeah. I like that we're getting to a point where we can have a pretty varied type, like a, a pure crab team with a pretty broad amount of types yeah we're getting a lot of crabs there's at least three crabs uh if you no. call them there's kingler which is water crawdent which is water dark there's uh crustle which is rock bug there yeah is hermit crab crabomitable, crabomitable which is ice fighting. fighting yeah yeah and there's cloth which is rock we have five if we get one more crab <laughs> one more crab and one you could probably crab. kind of squeeze something else, kind of crab adjacent, like Clawwitz or, or something, another crustacean. Yeah, even though it's a scrimp. Yeah, if, if you really wanted to round out that team now. Well, a Crawdon is technically uh, a Crawdad, which is not a crab. It's more like a scrimp. Yeah. Either so way. By technicalities, Clawwitzer would definitely be. It's the bivalve. No, that's not the right term. Crustacean. Yeah. So cloth still is B tier for me, middle of B tier. Actually, you're right. I put it in high C, but like I'm gonna switch it because I like cloth. Yeah, look middle at B. it. It's yeah, it's, it's just, fun. It's, I like it's that crab. it. I like that the blood rushes to its head <laughs> when it's trying to to hunt for prey. It's just like whoa! Yeah, and I just gotta, look at I its face. Like, oh. Its face is so. It has little blush marks. It has a little blush mark. I I. I there's not a bad you can't have a bad crab yeah i say this is a person who eats a lot of crabs if i can <laughs> i mean i would eat cloth but i would also be cloth's friend yeah it's not the cloth, same cloth cloth is friend shape for certain people uh can we skip this line <sighs> Nackley. no listen Nack. i have a lot of really interesting things to say about Nackley. okay first of okay. all did you get it? It's NACL. Yeah. Salt. I know it's NACL salt. I didn't get it until very late in the game. I didn't get it until. Uh, I think I didn't get it until I knew about Garganical, but that was like mid game. Yeah. I uh I, <laughs> I uh I pronounced that name uh Garganacle, like a tabernacle. Oh, that's probably the correct way. But we'll Is get it? To that. Yeah. Passport? Okay, I don't know. I don't, uh, I literally I I kept calling it N A C L E. Well, <laughs> well uh, Nackley, uh, it was born in a layer of rock salt deep under the earth. The species is particularly treasured in the old days, as they would share precious salt. And Violet says, <laughs> <laughs> "It seasoned your food." Listen, Arboliva, Veluza, Nackley. Caps the kid. Like you're getting you're getting a meal out of this GP. I I mean I should do that. I should do a run with just a meal. My my a team, my team a is meal. a meal. Listen, we got Fido, we're getting there. You'll get your bread. <laughs> uh the ground, have a fish sandwich. The ground scrapes its body as it travels, causing it to leave salt behind. Salt is constantly being created and replenished inside of Nackley's bottle body. <laughs> the Pokemons crave that yeah. mineral. I saw this and I thought it was some sort of like rock mushroom. That's what I thought too. And I did not like Nackley. I, I I liked it when I thought it was a rock mushroom. I did not like Nackley. Uh, 
at all. And I and I could and I could tell you right now that I probably still don't like Nackle. That said, though, that does not extend to the other evolutions, and we'll get to it. You know, we're gonna have very different opinions. Nackley is probably B tier, upper B tier for me. Nackley is. Nackley is above Flamigo, below the Taurus. Taurus is my middle of the board. Like Taurus is literally like anything. I base things on whether I like them more or less than Taurus. Oh, uh, Nackle stack. Now, Knackle stack, this, on the other hand. This Pokemon dry cures its prey by spraying salt all over them. The curing process steals away the water in the prey's body. It compresses rock Vicious. salt inside its body and shoots out hardened salt pellets with enough force to penetrate an iron sheet. Uh, See, like... Minecraft. I hate it. <laughs> yeah, Knackle stack is not, not, not as great as Garganackle, but... There is a very specific Knackle stack. It's a static Terra type right in front of Port Marina Marinada, like where you do the, the auctioning. Yeah. It is a ghost type Knackle stack with the egg move curse. Literally game changer. Like I, I went above like I went through the game in a very poor order like i did some of the harder stuff right at the beginning so i was literally struggling like it was hard for me to play the game and it was really refreshing because i had to think about it it was the first time in my entire life i had to use x items i use x defense in combat for the first time in my like 30 years of existence i still not use them <laughs> yeah no that's what i'm saying because i went i went about it wrong like this this next time when i played scarlet i went through the like a better direction and like i was able to survive yeah um and i haven't i haven't used any of my second playthrough but like yeah like for context i did the fighting uh star base which is like one of the harder things i did that like as my third like thing yeah, that's <laughs> you the know hardest star base mm -hmm. that's the highest level star base yeah that's what i'm saying i like I just, I didn't know. Like, I thought that the game would, like, balance, you know, like, it would, like, balance the the, the enemy's levels based on oh, your progress no. or something. Yeah, no, they, I didn't they said, know. They, they, back with, like, the first up, or second up, when they first revealed Open World, like, within two days, they said, oh, there's no uh, level scale. Yeah, I didn't know that, right? So, like, I literally... Radio silence. I wanted nothing to know about the game, except obviously, like we talked about it. Like my brother ended up spoiling a couple things for me, and that's how I learned what I learned. But this knuckle stack carried me because it, it, one of the abilities it can learn is sturdy. So I would switch into it. Terra type curse. The Pokemon would one shot my knuckle stack. But the curse would still go through because of sturdy, and that's how I was able to beat any Pokemon that was like too strong for where I was at. And literally, my first playthrough, all the way through to the end of the game, that Knackle Stack evolution, Garganackle, but like specifically because of that Knackle Stack, I was able to finish my first playthrough of the game. And I got it this time around as well, but like I haven't used it as much because I don't need to because I understand the game a little. Better and I followed it in a better order. But Knackle Stack specifically for all of that goes into high A tier. High A tier. Okay. Yeah, I placed mine in low D tier. <laughs> yeah. I just, and it then, looks like a Minecraft creature to me, and I don't like Minecraft. And It does look like a Minecraft creature. It looks jarring to me for something in Pokemon. And it wasn't going to be as high, and Garganackle isn't wasn't going to be as high as it is now until I read the Scarlet entry for it. For Gar changed my mind. Garganackle. Yeah, for the next one. Uh, Garganackle will rub its fingertips together and sprinkle injured Pokemon with salt. Even severe wounds will promptly heal afterward. And many Pokemon gather around Garganackle, hoping to lick at its mineral-rich salt. They crave the mineral crave that mineral but yeah i love that it becomes like from like the violent knuckle stack like tendencies it becomes like a caretaker like 
it's nice and Pokemon like it. So I have one in my party so everybody can uh, have a little salt lick for when they're in the middle of combat and I'm in a picnic. Like, Garganackle was a sleeper hit. I did not think I would fall in love with this dumb rock. I never have a rock Pokemon in my team, but to be fair, my Garganackle barely even attacks. Like, it has <laughs> Recover, Protect, Substitute, and Curse. Like, it cannot deal damage other than Curse. <laughs> there. Yeah, no, yeah. I just, I don't like the uh, blockiness of them. No, it's it's kind of ugly, but uh yeah you f tiered i s tiered yeah very different uh yeah. does salt like form like that like blocky um no there are specific mines in spain that are salt mines that are mined into like those very iconic block shapes and that's what it's basing it off of like you yeah. see like this brown dirt and then you'll see the into the ditch and then like it's like these like literally huge blocks of salt that are being mined i'll look it up but uh no, we can, I believe we can... you. <laughs> I just, no I, I just i don't know it doesn't it doesn't feel like a thing that should exist in this game to me yeah 